the top stories tonight and why news. The Senate and the House of Representatives are all set to canvass the votes cast for president and vice president elections and later proclaim the next top leaders of the country. Arsenio Balisacan, Bienvenido La Guesma, and Tuts Ople have accepted the offers to join the cabinet of presumptive president Bongbong Marcos. An infectious disease expert says it is too early to implement border restrictions following the detection of more transmissible Omicron subvariant BA.4 in the Philippines. The Senate has approved on third and final reading the bill seeking to grant lifetime validity on birth, death and marriage certificates. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, May 23, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Harleen Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts. I am William Theo. First in the news. The Congress, sitting as National Board of Canvassers, or NBOC, will convene tomorrow, May 24, to begin tallying the votes for the presidential and vice presidential elections. The NBOC Congress is determined to finish on May 26 to proclaim the next top leaders of the country. Nel Maribohok has the story. The Senate and House of Representatives have agreed to expedite the counting of votes for the president and vice president position. Earlier, House Secretariat officials received the ballot boxes containing the election returns and certificates of canvas from the Senate. According to Mark Leandro Mendoza, Secretary General of the Lower House, they will conduct the canvassing of votes 24 hours every day. Uh, yung canvassing natin, ano siya, diretso niya, so wala, wala nang break or walang, ano, walang suspension ng session nang napag-usapan the other day between the both houses, Senate and the lower house. Kaya ba nila sir? Kaya kasi may mga alternate naman tayo na representatives ano, from the Senate and the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. As earlier agreed by the leaders of both houses of Congress, the legislature, through House Speaker Lord Alan Velasco and Senate President Vicente Soto III, is scheduled to proclaim the duly elected president and vice president on May 27. But according to Mendoza and Senate Majority Floor Leader Juan Miguel Zubiri, the canvassing is likely to end earlier than the targeted timeline. Hopefully by latest will be Thursday morning. Yeah, proclaim na rin po natin Thursday morning. That's latest na po yan. Pero pag uh, wala naman pong medyo, ano, dire-diretso po tayo, hopefully Wednesday night, tapos po tayo. Ang aming pinag-usapan kahapon ay kung kaya po ng Wednesday ng gabi, late afternoon or early evening, we will definitely uh, do it by Wednesday. Pursuant to Article 7, Section 4 of the Constitution, the Senate and the House of Representatives shall meet in joint public session not later than 30 days after the election to canvass the votes for President and Vice President of the Philippines. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine National Police assures the safe conduct of the special elections in Lanao del Sur tomorrow. Thousands of voters are expected to cast their votes in the high-risk areas. Lea Ilagad reports why. The Philippine National Police continues to receive threats ahead of special elections in Tubaran, Lanao del Sur. That is why PNP officer in charge, Police Lieutenant General Vicente Danao Jr. says, 600 personnel from the Special Action Force and Mobile Force Battalion will secure the area. Uh, the threat is always there, no? Uh, kaya nga po naglagay tayo ng napakalaking kwersa. Aside from the cops, an additional 400 soldiers will also be deployed in the area. Then all confirms that new police graduates will serve as Board of Election Inspectors or BEIs for the special polls. They are from the Police Regional Office, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region or Pro Bar. Uh, yung mga BEIs po doon are uh, new police graduates and they are not from that place. Okay, hindi po sila taga doon. They are 51 of them who are just new graduates from Pro Bar and they are trained by the COMELEC to serve as the DEIs. No? 
Board of Electoral Inspectors. So they will assist the voters to secure, okay, to have a secured, accurate, and fair elections for Tubaran Town. The Commission on Elections declared a failure of election in 12 barangays in Tubaran, Lanao del Sur due to security issues. 8,000 voters are expected to cast their votes tomorrow. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Commission on Elections expects the proclamation of the winning parlous groups in the 2022 polls on Thursday, May 26. Meanwhile, teachers and support staff who have experienced delays on Election Day will be given 2,000 additional honoraria. Dante Almento tells us why. The poll body assures that all systems are go for the special elections in Tubaran, Lanao del Sur tomorrow. The security is in place and the contingency vote counting machines or VCMs and SD cards were already deployed. Commissioner George Irwin Garcia says these special elections are necessary as for them to proclaim the winning party lists on Thursday, May 26. I was able to see initially the computation uh, para do sa party list. Alam niyo kung makikita niyo lang yung number 63? Yung, kasi we have only 63 uh, uh, seats eh. Yung 63 at 64, halos ang difference lang isang libo. So, eh, hanggang 63 lang tayo. Yung 63 at 62, 61, 60, ang difference lang, wala pa mga 2,000. So, definitely, yung result ng tubaran will affect the result ng party list din. Garcia said they want to proclaim the winning party list groups, especially those who are already entitled to guaranteed seats. Meanwhile, the Commission and Bank may approve the resolution for the 2,000 pesos additional honoraria for electoral boards and DESO support staff who experienced delay during the elections due to defective vote counting machines and SD cards. After the promulgation of the resolution, the budget will be released immediately. The money is already there and we will uh, uh, unload the money sa mga accounts ng ating mga guru. Uh, kapag ka na, I think ngayong araw na ito makukumpleto yung pirma ng Commission and Bank. Pasensya na po kayo, pasensya na po sa ating mga guro. Um, hindi po namin uh, mabibigay yung pong hinihingi ng DepEd na, uh, na amount na gusto po nila. Kasi nga po medyo malaki, hindi naman po kasama sa budget namin yon. Some 2,038 clustered precincts had problems with VCMs and SD cards in the elections. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And with only two weeks left, the Senate has passed and adopted several measures today as they resume session. These include a proposed measure seeking to provide a lifetime validity of civil registry documents, including birth and death certificates in all transactions. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. A measure seeking to alleviate the public from additional requirements and costs has been passed in the Senate in today's opening of session. Senate Bill 2450, or the Permanent Validity of the Certificates of Live Birth, Death and Marriage Act, was approved on third and final reading, with 21 senators approving the bill. Through this, our people do not have to unnecessarily spend time and money in uh, secur sec uh, securing new copies of their documents. Senator Francis Kiko Pangilinan, the principal author of the bill, also expressed gratitude to his colleagues for supporting the measure. Under the bill, all government offices, private companies, schools, and non-government entities will be banned from requiring newly issued birth, death, or marriage certificates from those transacting business with them. Violators will face a punishment of one to six months imprisonment or a fine of not less than 5,000 pesos, but not more than 10,000 pesos should this bill become a law. Its counterpart bill at the House of Representatives was passed in June last year. 
Senate Majority Leader Mig Zubiri is optimistic it will hurdle the bicameral conference committee before the third regular session of 18th Congress adjourns on June 3rd. Other measures that were approved on third and final reading include Private Security Services Industry Act, Creative Industries Charter of the Philippines, Provincial Science and Technology Office Act, Parent Effectiveness Service Program Act, and the Office of the Government Corporate Council, or OGCC Charter. Jorilin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Seven persons, including two senior citizens, have died on board a fast craft vessel after it caught fire off the waters of Real Quezon. In an incident report, the Philippine Coast Guard said the passengers who perished include five females and two males. It was not immediately clear whether the victims died from the fire or from drowning. The MV Mercraft 2 was carrying 126 passengers and eight crew members. Of the total rescued, 103 are in good condition and 24 suffered injuries. Investigators have yet to determine the cause of the fire, but initial investigation revealed it started from the engine room of the vessel. The PCG teams did not find signs of an oil spill in the area of the incident. More cases of monkeypox have been detected in different countries. However, health experts says its transmission is slower compared to COVID-19. Aiko Miguel will tell us why live. Uh, yes, uh, Aiko, good evening. Uh, how can this virus be transmitted to humans and are there available vaccines to treat this virus? Yes, William, good evening. The World Health Organization, or WHO, is closely monitoring the emergence of monkeypox in different countries. Monkeypox is a viral zoonotic disease that occurs primarily in tropical rainforest areas of Central and West Africa and is occasionally exported to other regions. It was first discovered in 1958 when two outbreaks of a pox-like disease occurred in colonies of monkeys kept for research, hence the name monkeypox. The first human case of monkeypox was recorded in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of the Congo during a period of intensified effort to eliminate smallpox. And monkeypox affecting a number of countries WHO is working with national authorities to respond quickly and effectively to these outbreaks. Infectious diseases expert Dr. Ronchin Solante said monkeypox can be transmitted from one person to another by close contact with lesions, body fluids, respiratory droplets, and contaminated materials such as bedding. It can also be transmitted to humans through close contact with an infected person or animal. For the monkeypox, the most common human-to-human -human route of transmission or mode of transmission is only respiratory droplets, so meaning within three feet, talking to each other without any face mask. That's the, that's the mode of transmission. William, similar to COVID, monkeypox transmission can be prevented through observing minimum public health standards, such as proper wearing of face masks, social distancing, and good hand hygiene. The World Health Organization is coordinating with international partners for proper guidance to countries on how to mitigate the spread of monkeypox, even the possible cure against this rare disease. Yes, this is an orthopox virus. This is one that is on our radar, uh, of course, but we really need to better understand the extent of monkeypox in endemic countries to pull together advancing our understanding on the epidemiology um, in terms of transmission. Um, and especially the use of antivirals, the use of vaccines um, to help prevent this. Well, again, the WHO is also finding out if there are other modes of monkeypox transmission. So what we're looking at here is a number of um, uh, studies that are ongoing to better understand, number one, the extent of circulation of monkeypox um, in London uh, among communities with men who have sex with men um, and making sure that testing is occurring, that isolation of uh, men or people um, who are suspected of having monkeypox. National Task Force Against COVID-19 Medical Advisor Dr. Ted Herbosa said the smallpox vaccine can be possibly used to cure monkeypox. Mm -hmm. Sa same family siya, 
ay eh, maaring uh, maga- magawang bakuna mm. at pwedeng epektibo dito sa monkeypox. So, Opo. doon sa mga bansa na naka-store yung, naka-freeze yung virus ng smallpox, they can actually manufacture the necessary vaccine. So, although wala tayo commercially, kung, kung yan ay kumalat, uh, pwedeng gumawa ng bakuna. So far, William, 92 monkeypox cases were reported in 12 countries including Australia, Belgium, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, United Kingdom, and United States. There are also 28 suspected cases in the Philippines. The Department of Health says no monkeypox has been detected yet. And that is the latest live. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you, Aiko Miguel, reporting live from Quezon City. An infectious disease expert believes it is too early to implement border restrictions following the detection of another Omicron subvariant BA.4 in the Philippines. The variant is highly transmissible and considered as a variant of concern. Meanwhile, local government units are now urged to intensify their COVID-19 booster campaign. Rosalie Cons explains why. Infectious diseases expert Dr. Ron Jean Solante says the public should not panic over the presence of Omicron subvariants in the country. Recently, a Filipino who returned to the Philippines from Middle East on May 4 was found positive of the Omicron subvariant BA.4. The BA.4 is seen to be a highly transmissible subvariant of Omicron and a variant of concern because of its ability to evade immune protection even from vaccination. But Dr. Solante says it is too early to implement border restrictions as well as raise the alert level against COVID-19. So far, it's too early to, to implement a border restriction. Even in countries where BA.4 and 5 is already increasing, they don't uh, implement border restrictions. Instead, the government should strictly monitor the situation and test the vulnerable individuals with COVID-19 symptoms. However, the expert as well as the Okta research team believes the Omicron subvariants may possibly cause another surge in the country. But they believe this will not affect the health system, especially if vaccination will be intensified and the public will continuously adhere to health protocols. Meanwhile, now that the elections is almost finished, local government units are now urged to focus on intensifying their vaccination and booster campaign against the virus. Presidential Advisor on Entrepreneurship Secretary Joey Concepcion said this as the country still has a lot of vaccine supplies and to prevent the threat of another COVID-19 surge due to Omicron sub-variants. Now, halos tapos ng election natin at siguro mga, uh, mga governors, mayors natin ay makakafocus dito sa mga bakuna drive natin, especially sa booster shots. No? At, Da, tama rin ang sinasabi na hanapin ang mga hindi bakunado, i-convince natin na talagang importante ito habang may mga dosage pa tayo. The Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG has already directed LGUs to scour their areas and encourage the unvaccinated and those eligible to get booster shots to be inoculated. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In other news, a former presidential legal advisor of President Rodrigo Duterte warns of a political upheaval if the incoming administration will not fulfill their promises during the election campaigns. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. Former presidential legal advisor attorney Salvador Panelo warns that unfulfilled promises during the new administration might cause a discontent among supporters. Magiging problema ni ng administrasyon bago kung lumihi sila doon sa pangako nila. Panelo believes the BBM Sara Tandem won due to their vow to continue the program started by the Duterte administration. During an interview in the program Politiscope, he advises the two to stay true to their promised programs and reforms once they officially assume their position as the country's new top leaders. Pag yan eh, lumihi sila, maniwala ka yan, 16 million na bumoto kay BP Lene. Eh, yun ang babanan sa kanya. Lalaki ng lalaki yun. At pati yung mga followers na presidente, madi-disappoint. 
Pag nag-combine dalawang yan, nako, meron ka na namang upheaval dito. It may bring us to the precipice. <laughs> Yun. Yun na ang precipice. Of another right? unwanted, unnecessary, useless political upheaval. For Panelo, some of the programs that should be continued include the War on Drugs, the Anti-Corruption and Anti-Terrorism campaign. The people should also cooperate with the new leaders for a more prosperous country. Walang administration magsasaksit kung yung citizenry hindi nagko-cooperate. Mm -hmm. Kailangan magkasama yan. Otherwise, maniwala ka, pabalik-balik tayo sa problema ng bayan. Attorney Panelo also confirmed that presumptive President Marcos Jr. already visited the Malacanang to seek the advice of President Duterte. Meanwhile, he believes that the Supreme Court will junk the restraining order against the canvassing of Congress to avoid a constitutional crisis. My educated guess is baka ang Korte Suprema dahil they will avoid a constitutional mm -hmm. crisis. And they can do that by junking the disqualification case. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Three more people have accepted the offers to join the cabinet of presumptive President Bongbong Marcos Jr. Janice and Henter reports. Aside from the presumptive President Bongbong Marcos Jr.'s confirmation and the appointment of Cavite Congressman Boying Rimolia as the next DOJ Secretary, BBM said that he nominated former Labor Secretary Benny Laguesma to the same position in his cabinet, while Susan Tutz Ople will be the next Secretary of the Department of Migrant Workers. Laguesma and Ople were told to start fixing the policies in their respective departments since they formally assume office. That's really my general policy so on lahat na ito, uh, is to fix policy as early as now um, the, so that when the time comes mm -hmm. that we are giving now our nominations to the CA ay mabilis na ang magiging proseso at kahit na hindi pa ma-confirm yung mga iba, hindi pa natapos ang confirmation process ng mga iba ay uh, ang mangyayari ay i Eh, ma marami na tayong uh, na naintindihan na ng mga tao natin, the cabinet, the secretaries, and uh, the rest of government, kung ano yung kailangan gawin, what is expected, what the timetable uh, has to be, uh, so that we can immediately start work uh, as soon as, uh, as, soon as uh, the, term, the, 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 the term of the next administration began, begins. Meanwhile, BBM also confirmed that he appointed Arsenio Balisacan as Secretary of the National Economic Development Authority. Balisacan, an economist and current chairman of the Philippine Competition Commission and was then an EDA secretary during the term of former President Benigno Noynoy Aquino III. Uh, we have very similar thinking in, uh, in that regard. I know he's very competent. I know he's... Uh, uh, his policies are policies that uh, um, will be to the betterment of our country and for employment, uh, for the development of the economy. Nag-uusap kami ng ilang oras at mukha namang tumutugma ang aming pag-iisip tungkol sa approach natin dito sa mga darating na ilang taon when it comes to the economic managers. In the coming days, Marcos will also name his appointed economic manager, who he said has played a large part in the country's economic recovery amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Janice Inhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. With just weeks left in his term, President Duterte apologized for all his shortcomings as the country's leader as he said six years would not be enough to finish all his projects. He made the statement during the inauguration of the new Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA head office building in Pasig City late this afternoon. President Duterte said this is not because of negligence but because of the lack of enough time to finish all the business. Meanwhile, the chief executive also thanked all those who helped the government during his term. In a few days, I'll be out. I, yung nagawa ko, 
para sa akin yun na yun. The best that my efforts can really achieve. Kung kulang pa yun, pasensya na po. Yun, hindi ko na talaga kaya. The things that I failed to do, mostly not because of negligence or may mga shortcomings ako, but talagang time, the six years would not be enough to finish all the projects. At ba sa inyong lahat, maraming salamat po sa inyo and your help in my journey in the six years na binigyan ninyo ako ng honor maging presidente ng Pilipinas. Maraming maraming salamat. News abroad. North Korea has seen a positive trend amid battling COVID outbreak while USA is ready to provide them medical support. Ruth Bahe will give us the details live. Good evening, Ruth. Kelsey, good evening. North Korea has reported a positive trend after the number of new daily fever cases dropped below 200,000 yesterday. The country rose of a favorable turn in their COVID-19 situation, stating that the crisis and responsibility awareness is further enhanced across the country and that they have strict execution of lockdown and blockade measures, according to North Korea's Central News Agency. The explosive outbreak in North Korea so far has infected nearly 2.5 million people and killed 68. During United States President Joe Biden's visit in South Korea, over the weekend, he announced that the U.S. has offered to provide vaccines to North Korea, but they have not received a response from them yet. We've offered vaccines not only to North Korea, but to China as well. And we're prepared to do that immediately. We've got no response. A senior U.S. administration official also expressed that their COVID-19 restrictions might have taken part in North Korea's lack of response. Authorities in North Korea have distributed food and medicines, and one million health workers, including military medics, students, and teachers, have been deployed to conduct medical exams across the country. Elsie? Ruth, how are the people in North Korea battling their first coronavirus outbreak? Elsie, they are promoting traditional medicine, including drinking herbal teas, gargling salt water, and use of painkillers and antibiotics. Also, they are speeding up the production in pharmaceutical factories, but did not give details which medicines were being made. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Ruth Bae, for that live report. After almost a decade of coalition rule, Australia's Labour Party has emerged victorious in the 2022 federal elections. Mavian Dog will give us the details live. Yes, Maeve? Elsie, Australia's 31st Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has been sworn in this morning in Canberra, Australia. Along with his deputy Richard Marles and frontbenchers Penny Wong, Jim Chalmers and Katie Gallagher. The latest Australian Electoral Commission count shows Labour is likely to hold at least 76 out of the 151 seats in the House of Representatives, meaning the party will be able to govern in its own right. In his first international trip as Prime Minister, Mr. Albanese and the newly elected Foreign Affairs Minister Penny Wong takes part in the Quad Leader Summit today in Tokyo, Japan. According to a statement from the new Prime Minister Sunday night, the summit brings together Australia, Japan, India and the United States of America in support of a free, open and resilient Indo-Pacific. U.S. President Joe Biden congratulated Mr. Albanese on Sunday and expressed his appreciation for his early commitment to the alliance. He is also looking forward to a close partnership between their administrations. Under his government, Mr. Albanese stated that he would continue to work through the Quad and deliver positive and practical initiatives on health, security and climate change in the region. Elsie? 
Maiv, and how did the other countries' leaders react to Mr. Albanese being Australia's new prime minister? Elsie, firstly, the world leaders welcome the incoming government of Australia for a few different reasons. They include the push for Labour's plan on climate action, their hopes to further strengthen ties with Australia, and to polish out any friction from the previous government. UK and India were the first to react and send their congratulations, along with the United States, France, Solomon Islands, Fiji, and New Zealand. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Mavian Dog reporting live from Australia. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. Senior citizens and differently abled Filipinos can now avail discounts and VAT exemptions when purchasing online. JP Dunyas will tell us why. Several government agencies signed a joint memorandum circular to grant 20% discount for senior citizens and persons with disability for their online transactions. This include purchase of product and availing services from online business entities. Department of Trade and Industry under Secretary Ruth Castello explains that the memorandum means to clarify the scope of discounts for seniors and PWDs which is already in the provisions of existing law. Walang distinction as to any kind of transaction. Hindi sinabing offline lang, meaning physical, hindi naman sinabing online lang. So since wala siyang distinction, uh, the law on the discount applies to either either physical or uh, virtual transaction. The discount is also not limited to phone transactions or short messaging system or SMS transactions. Senior citizens and PWDs just need to present their IDs to online business entities for validation. Senior citizens see these guidelines to be beneficial to them. Napakaganda niya kasi Right now, ang para maka-avail ka ng 20% discount sa inyong citizen, kailangan physical, nandun ka, pupunta ka ng lugar. Eh, pero kung online, much better, lalo na kung medyo may kapansanan or may sakit. So, just one click away lang. I mas malaking advantage sa akin yan in terms of, uh, uh, ano, kasi under maintenance ako eh. So, sa halip na punta directly sa... Mercury drug or sa mga drugstore, if eh, kung may option to order online, so why not? Ma, may discount nga, eh di yung madi-discount, maibibili pa namin ng ibang mga bagay na kinakailangan namin. At saka, kagaya ko, mahilig din nga talaga akong mag-purchase online. At uh, yun nga, medyo mahal, walang discount, eh dapat... May discount nga din kahit online kasi diba senior nga kami. So kung 500 yung 1,000 a month, eh malaking, ano yun, malaking diferensya yung 250. Na matitipid? Na matitipid. Oh. Oh, okay. Tama yun kasi yung 250 pwede ba pang gumagamit sa ibang bagay. Oh. The DTI reminds the public to transact with legitimate sellers to avail the proper discount. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Our Kasangbahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is 
an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. We will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 12, it says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom He hath chosen for His own inheritance. the reasons behind the news may 23 2022 reasons we deliver to you as they unfold i am herlin delgado and because we need to know we will always ask why i am william theo we serve the people we give glory to god